Welcome to another edition of What a Shout in the Racing Post Current Weekly Magazine Show. Myself, Dave Orton, in the chair, joined again by JJ Hamlet. JJ White shirts, what's going on? No, it's like we've just called each other, isn't it? And the so boy band alone. is slowly happening. The new Ant and Deck. Oh, I'll always have to sit on this side then. JJ, we spoke last week about you riding for the Queen. Yes, we did, Dave. And on today's show, we have the Racing Post royalty himself in the form of Paul <laughs> Keeley and also a man who rode for over a decade for a king. Alan King, that is. We have Wayne Hutchinson. Wayne, how you doing? JJ, good. Yeah, all Seamless right. stuff, that, wasn't it? It's, yeah. it's all on here, you know. Flowed. Yeah, OK, so Wayne, all good. Right, so let's have a look at what we've got coming up on today's show. OK, so it's all about the hot topics, the big calls. We've got festival clues. We'll be talking about the Irish racing as much as we can. My Racing Double. Let's see what they've got in store for us there. And, of course, the big naps from each of the panellists. So, guys, the hot topic of the day, what we want to talk about is Brian Hughes and Richard Johnson. Who's going to be crowned this year's champion jockey? As you know, from 1995, it's always been Sir A.P. McCoy and Richard Johnson battling out the top. But this year, Brian Hughes, do you think he can do it? And also, do you think... Being based up north and the reputation he does actually have now and the horse he's getting to ride, do you think he's got a good shot of this this year? Uh, well, look, he's got a shot. I mean, I think we're, we're jumping the gun a little bit. I think everybody's jumping the gun a little bit because, you know, it's now January. He's got until you know, basically the end of April. Uh, racing will get more competitive. It'll make it harder. Uh, for Brian Hughes because he won't have all the big stables to call on that Richard Johnson's got. Philip Hobbs is he's, in sizzling form. Well, absolutely, well, right? uh, absolutely. So I, I would make Richard Johnson uh, still a strong favourite, but Brian Hughes has shown that he is, is one of the best. Five, four times he's won it, Richard yeah, Johnson. He has, yeah, yeah. He, you know, Brian Hughes has now shown that he is one of the best jockeys around, and he probably should be used more by by Southern stables for the big meetings as well. But uh, you know, obviously he got he's got a big reputation in the north and deservedly so. Mr. Whitaker, of course, for Shannon, wasn't it? A couple of years ago, you know, shows he can do exactly. it. Exactly. Oh yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. When he gets, you know, it's like you know, it's like on the flat. Danny Tudhope is getting used by a lot of. Uh, of sudden uh, trainers now, uh, and deservedly so, and the same should happen, and, and may well happen in the future with Brian Hughes. Wayne? Um, look, I think injury uh, free is going to play a massive part into it, of course, um, but I think Richard is still a strong favourite for me. Um, and I think you've got to take into consideration the winter we've had, you know, racing has been sort of slower, if you like. I think everybody's numbers, you know, trainers-wise, jockeys, winners-wise, are sort of a lot steadier than what they have been in the past just because of, obviously, the, the winter we've had and the horses running. But uh, I expect sort of Richard to, to get going again. That's another point as well. When you do get abandonments, when it gets really cold, you're more likely to get them in the north mm. uh, than you are in the south. Yeah, absolutely, quite right. And it's where do we go? Jumpers, bumpers, you see. Brian Hughes coming down to Kempton to try and do it, but he's going to go all out for it, isn't it? One hundred percent. We saw that bumper on Wednesday, of course. Uh, Nicky Richards won it with Brian and, and Richard going hammer and tongs through the final furlong. The narrative is there. I think there's a jockeys' championship. So, when, as we all know, you had some great memories in the saddle, but which is, do you think stands out and is the le unique? See what you've done there. Yeah, le <laughs> unique. JJ in <and> French. <laughs> did you learn German at school? I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, it would have to be Smad Place in the Hennessy. Um, yeah. you know, he, he was an iconic uh, figure. He was great for my career and took me to days that, uh, obviously, through my career that I could only dream of. And you know, the performance that he put in in the Hennessy was uh, super. Fantastic, isn't it? I've got another Hutch Fav myself, though. Medinus in the uh, Coal Cup. Shall we first that's, that's pro probably because, because of the price. Shot <laughs> and got me right out of trouble. Is that right? Was that a bad day? <laughs> it was oh, a was bad week up until then. Yeah, that was a slick horse as well, wasn't it? I mean, that was, was that a plot job? Or was it just uh, the case no, of horse no, turned up at the right? No, I don't know if I've got time, but I've actually... The, Not it, at all. Uh, he went on for ages, didn't he, M M Medinus? Right? You know, he I mean, he wasn't, being, you know, he was totally exposed. Well done, when yeah, yeah, yeah he, he won the Grade 2 at Newbury the following season. He was an improving handicapper. But, uh, yeah, off a mark of 148 at Cheltenham, I actually wanted to ride our other horse in the race because uh, I thought he was um, badly handicapped. So and, you, and the boss sort of said, no, it's, you know, stay on him um, because Chop got injured uh, two weeks prior to, to Cheltenham. So. Just shows you how it goes. So, yeah, the you boss know, done me a favour. on the other day. <laughs> day after Boxing Day, it's all about choices, isn't it? It's, and sometimes it just falls your yeah, way. Right. While we've got you, Wayne, uh, some questions from the audience. Out there. Sue Ma has been in touch. Says, all the best for the future, Wayne. What was your favourite horse you ever rode? A uh, smart place. Like, he, he, was, he was a brilliant jumper. Uh, he was just a joy. A that gentleman. was a smash job, that one. I mean, that was a demolition job in that Hennessy, wasn't it? Yeah, he's galloped and ragged. Was yeah. that a case of just getting into a decent rhythm on tacky ground and just keep yeah, going? Yeah, I, I thought he was always on his best on, on sort of, you know, deep deepish ground which it was at Newbury and uh, he, he coped with it very very well. 
he did me a few favours. I, I think I was with him that day, actually. Not for lots. I was one of those that, you know, if a horse was running the race before, got well beaten it before, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, why? Right. But then you don't think about it. He didn't have a prep the year before, Yeah, that's really. it. And you know what I mean? And he came out and he actually won at Kempton really nicely, well. hadn't he? Mm. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and that was yeah, the first so time from at, the front as well, yeah. and, uh, and that was sort of yeah. unlocked the key to him in a, in, a, in a way that finding his gear and making use of it. He it almost started a bit of a fashion, by. didn't it, in that race? Getting up front and just keeping going, we said it before. It says a lot for these staying handicap chases. You probably do need to be somewhere near the front. It's very hard to make up ground when you're tiring, uh, because jumping becomes more difficult, especially if the ground is bad. So uh, it probably does make sense. You see more races more often than not are won uh, over fences, over long distances from being somewhere close to the pace. Just another quick one. I know that we've got you know, a simple answer for this, uh, but Daniel Phillips has been in touch. That if you're still riding for Alan King, which horse would you most be looking forward to with the festival in mind? Uh, Glancing Queen. Um, yeah, why has she not been out yet? I think she's had a couple of setbacks um, in, in, the, in the autumn. Because the ground um, would have been right. Yeah, been. yeah, yeah, yeah. She was schooling away actually before I've, uh, I sort of called time and uh, I say I just think she had a couple of setbacks, but she, hopefully she'll be out uh, in a not too soon future. So we need to know from Wayne Hutchinson. So guys, this weekend we've got some great racing, as you know. We're starting off with the 205 Sylvan Yarko Chase at Kempton. What's everyone thinking of this? Well, I think, uh, I think it's a straightforward match between Top Notch and uh, Frodon. Um, on official figures, Frodon's the best horse by a fair way, and you'd normally make him favourite. But he actually probably wants to go left-handed. Trainer has said that he isn't, wasn't in the greatest of shape as well, so therefore Top Notch is odds on favourite. He won the Peterborough Chase last time. Um, had a bit of a battle with Kauto Rico, who is two pound better off for three quarters of a length, so I wouldn't rule him out. But um, he won this race last year, top notch, and he likes you know going right-handed. Two and a half miles is perfect for him. We've got to just before we come to Wayne talk about trainers getting news out there quickly. Frodon's not going so well. Then very quickly emerged <laughs> about the Altior. Yeah, so, the Altior. Listen, Altior was Altior was three four one on at the start of the week, and then he drifted out to five to two. There was a massive amount of fuss made over the fact that Nicky Anderson has this contract with Unibet, right? but that is actually missing the point altogether. It is nothing to do with Unibet whatsoever, and everything to do with the trainer that couldn't be bothered to tell anybody. Mm. The only people that actually. The only people that actually were victims of anything were bookmakers who laid top notch of five to one. Yeah, you know nobody's nobody's sitting at home waiting to press buttons to back Altior um, at a price that is ridiculous. We could talk about this all day. You know, I spoke so, to Pete Scargill, who broke the story for us, of course, on the front page. He said to me that roughly they think that the drift happened between the time that Hendo said he's going from first lot to last lot. Let's put him last lot. Right. Yeah. When you used to ride, I mean, you've got your phone on your, you know, on your horses, haven't you? It's, it's going to be easy for this sort of thing to break, isn't it, and get out. What's your feeling on the matter? <sighs> Look, it's, it's a massive grey area, isn't it? I think, you know, for me, I think it needs to be black and white. You know, it's, it's, it's a can of worms. Did you ever have bookmaker sponsorship? No. There you go. No. Okay. Yeah, I enough. might be saying different if I did. Yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> We'd all be saying different. Yeah, if the whole point is that uh, if this contract hadn't existed, the same would have happened. Because yeah, of course, because he didn't, break didn't it. tell anybody. That, this is a stable with form. This Paul, is a course, stable, you know, I mean, no, nobody's got a problem. If a horse works really well, then stable staff are fully entitled to go and smash it in the bookies as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, if there is an injury or some serious news about a major horse, that should be getting out first. And anybody who, you know, has association with the stable and they're acting the way they did, they actually give the, step, the stable the bad reputation which is what happened. You get loads of people on Twitter just saying, you know, just talking about Nicky Henderson and, and what he's done wrong. Yeah. Nicky Henderson probably didn't even know there was betting on a race. Twitter was alive, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly. We could talk about this forever. That's Alti or Nicky Henderson. But what wins the race tomorrow? Top notch Top again? notch. Can't see it get big. Uh, if Frodon's back to last season's form, he wins. Should be a decent match then. Right, second race we're going to have a look at this weekend then. Switching to Warwick. Big day for Warwick. And it's the Ballymore Leamington Novice Hurdle. Two mile five. We're looking towards Ballymore sort of horses here really, aren't we? And maybe Albert Bartlett, I think, later on. I'm a fan of Keen On uh, for the Majesty of the Queen. Wayne? Chandler for me. Um, Skelton. Yeah, yeah. I think he's probably... His form ties in with the, with the best, the British form. He was beaten by Chantry House and Edward Stone in a bumper last year. Um, solid horses in and around him. I think he's going to take all the beat. Yeah, it was a recovery job last time at Southern. We did do it very well. Yeah. Paul, this is a tidy little race. Isn't yes, it? it is tidy and it's tight uh, according to the betting. If you, if you looked on official ratings and the Irish raider Deco Irlande was trained by a big trainer in England, he'd be very short. He hosed up last he, time. He beat um, a chaser, basically, Mercy and Prince of I Catholic, that. But he did it, on the, he did it hard held. Uh, and he's got an official rating of 145 over hurdles. The next highest so far in, in this race is 135. So, you know, on what he's done, he's got a big edge. The only thing is, these are young horses uh, with far less experience than he's got, and they, they are capable, 
almost certainly of Sharon Moore. Um, my preference is just for Mossy Fenn. I don't think he stayed three mile on sticky ground. That, you know, he hadn't even turned five then, and that was three mile on what was really sticky well. ground. Well, he got squeezed out a little bit, but I think he was starting to feel the pinch then anyway, to be Maybe honest. third at best. Uh, yeah. I mean, he tried, he, I think he tried his heart out, but I just don't think he stayed. It was a bit early for him to be going over that sort of distance. This is the sort of race that Tristan has a bit of business with as well. Harry Senior, do we give him a chance? Yeah, well, I quite some, like him. You know, some, of, some yeah. of his form is okay. Yeah, yeah. So again, I mean, ties again, in with Edward Stone. It does, yeah. It good, does. good, yeah. good novice hurdle form. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is Edward yeah. Stone leaning towards the Ballymore mm. at the minute? I would imagine he would probably be more supreme. Right, so I okay, think. stick to the two miles. I okay. think if it was me, I would stick to two miles. For yeah. what I've seen of him he so far, he goes on good ground as well. He, he does, yeah, and he he, he travels very strongly He'd in his races. He's keen for going up and trip now. Yeah, So let's have a reminder. I'm keen on keen on for the Queen. Mossy Fen for me. The Scout and Horse for me. Yeah, Mossy Fen. Okay, time to go across the Irish Sea for the presenters of Up the Ante, Dave Jennings and Gavin Lynch. Let's see what they make of this week's big call. Gavin Lynch, Envoy Allen, is he the most exciting young horse you have ever seen? He's the most exciting in the last few years. He's brilliant, he's the real deal, he's bulletproof. Ground, left-handed, right-handed tactics, hold him up, make the running, jumps, skiers and battles. But hold on a second, right? Are we not getting carried away about his nays performance? He beat Elixir Dane and he beat Longhouse Poet. And he didn't exactly win on the bridle. Yeah, but he never wins by too far. Same with the bumper last year, he won by about a length. Why are people saying that he's the real deal, he's, he's the best we've ever seen? Why are people getting carried away after Nace? He's the perfect racehorse. I'm waiting to see him jump a fence. Is he the perfect racehorse? I think so, yeah. If you, if you don't fancy him, lay him in the Ballymore, but I'll back him in the Ballymore. You think he is the horse to beat in the Ballymore? Yeah, wait till they go, non runner no bet, and jump I on. think he's a gorgeous racehorse. I think he could be the real deal, but I don't know why. I think why he is the real deal. I, w I was just as impressed before Nace as I was after Nace. Nace taught me nothing. Yeah, well, he stays two and a half. I knew he stayed two and a half. He you think he's the, real the deal. perfect racehorse? Yep. Okay. Time I've, will tell. Yeah, time will tell with Envoy Allen. So guys, obviously split opinions there, as you saw. So what's everyone make of that? Right, well, uh, first thing I'd like to say is Gavin um, last year was telling everybody that Esquire Dallam was a certainty uh, for the champion hurdle and not there. he won the race um, and, you know, he's a big price. Uh, and so he's obviously a very good judge. And yeah. as we all know, DJ's a terrible judge. <laughs> How many arrows can I throw? However, <laughs> however, I'm in DJ's camp here. Um, nice. I did not... Um, I wasn't as impressed as everybody else seemed to be for, with, with that run at Nice. I thought, I mean, OK, first of all, it's probably difficult to look really impressive at Nace because it's like that in the straight. But at the same, you know, by the same token, I thought he was, you know, people said he was idling. To me, idling is just a term people shouldn't use in racing. The true term is knackered. Right? Nine times out of ten, it'll be knackered. <laughs> right? and, I, and that's what I thought he was. Now, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean he can't win at Cheltenham. He's still showing good form, but I think people have seen more. People think they've seen more than they have. And I think there are dangers. Fiddler on the Roof uh, being one of them, for, for sure. I was far more impressed with his Tolworth win than I was with, with Envoy Allen. Which begs the question, which races are they now going to go for? That's going to be the big topic, isn't it, in the next couple of weeks, whatever the ground's doing, or I guess with that. If you think he's a champion bumper winner as well, surely they'd be leading towards the Bannymore, wouldn't they? You'd think, uh, you know, you would think and, and obviously he stepped up and trip as well, didn't he, the last day, so... Um, but on what Paul said about idling, I'd have to disagree with you. Um, obviously, as a rider, horses do idle when they get to the front. Right, no, and, he, no. and he is a horse, is, uh, Gordon's no, actually no, no, said, no, no. He, not, he isn't going to be flamboyant. This is going to fill our two minutes yeah. here, I can tell. <laughs> and and, and going to oh, yeah. win impressively. He travels great through his races. He come there cruising, got to the front, and he's workman like and just doing enough. Okay, I'll tell you this. From, yeah. a, from, a, from a perspective of a punter, Every time I hear someone say a horse idled, I oppose it and I do far better than the people who stick with it. A horse isn't going to be easy on the eye every time he runs. That's interesting. I mean, just with my analyst hat on, I mean, I write about horses idling all the How time. How much more do you think Envoy Allen had in hand? That's good. That's a very good point, That's actually. a question when you talk about yeah, horse idling. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, don't, I don't think he had all that no much more. in hand, actually. I, I'd be with you on that a little bit. The question is, what's going to beat him, I suppose? Is it going to be something from the Hobbs stable? Is it going to be something from the Colin Tizard stable? You've mentioned uh, Fiddlers on the Roof, the Big breakaway. He looks like an absolute monster, doesn't it? Wherever he goes, if you think the master Debonair is going to go to the Supreme, surely they've got to spread him about a bit, haven't they? Yeah, I thought so. I mean, it depends on what the owners say. Filler on the roof looks very much like he will stay further. I mean, he powered away in the toll with on sticky ground. I thought that was really good, and they went fast then as well. Like you know, what I mean, it was a good time performance by all accounts. Uh, I, I think he achieved a lot there, and, and that race, even though there's you know, it's pathetic prize money for a Grade One in Britain, but. Year after year, it produces a very good horse. Yeah, it does, and a big point of a Chelton. That's Envoy LN then, a huge topic going forward. 
Okay, time to look at the My Racing Double then. If you don't know what My Racing is, have a look at the website out there. Free racing tips and expert advice as well. These have been interesting. The first one landed, 18 and a half to one double. They're on a bit of a recovery mission the last two weeks, but this week they've kept it simple. Top notch in the Silvianico Conti chase and in the Lanzarote north of the wall. Chat to a, a, a Paul quick line on that. Uh, yeah, well, I'm not going to say no because I like top what top notch, and I actually tipped north of the wall in a weekender. But so <laughs> by the same token, I think north of the wall has now shortened to a point where I wouldn't back the values it. Sit just up. just a case of all the all the main all the main horses are still in the race, and he's shortened up an awful lot more. So I wouldn't have that double myself. I wouldn't back north of the wall at the price he is now. But from an actual point of view, for maybe landing, there's a best. There's got I'll some go solidity it, to you it. You know, he looked like a horse that would stay a lot further when he won at Hereford. They won it really hard. They made it a right test, it was and he came though, through. It? It, 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 the only thing that worries me is he got, beat, he got beat. He got beat off 120 round Ascot in a in a conditional chase. Yeah, handicap. it was early season. Uh, sorry, handicap. conditional handicap hurdle. That was a good race. That was. Mason Jar, I think the second is up about sixteen pounds since. So, I think that was. I think it's that was worked a good out. Race. Yeah, it's worked out. Yeah. The skeletons target these races. Don't know. We'll get to that. Of course, if you want to have a bet, don't forget to go sign up to RacingPost.com for all the best offers. So, guys, the next race we're going to look at is the two forty at Kemp in the Lanzarote Handicap. Another nice little race. What's everyone thinking here? Well, uh, have you won it? I haven't. No, no. Um, and normally, it's a very strong piece of form leading into Cheltenham. It is. If you remember a couple of seasons ago, top of the game, missed out on it, didn't he? Um, exactly. Yeah, of course. What one of that was the Henderson horse, wasn't it, in the Dye Waters colours? Whose w name is completely escaping. Whisper. No, it no, wouldn't whisper. That's no. a great shout. Oh, da, 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 da. Did it have Henry in the name? William Henry. William, William Henry. Boom. <laughs> Kills is here for us. Happy days. So, is it going to be that sort of race this year going forward? I guess? Looking at it, I don't think so. I don't think it's the strongest of heats. Um, you've got a few youngsters that like to not trip Pierre of... Uh, not Ollie, Parry. Parry yeah. of uh, Ollie Murphy's. He could be a well-handicapped horse. I love the way he went through his race at Aintree the last day. Workman-like, but green when he got to the front. He lugged away a little bit left, and if he comes forward from that, I think he could still have uh, you know, some, some change in hand from the handicapper. JP McManus horse, Paul. Well, yeah, he's he, he's the he's the race the market is sort of hung on, isn't he? He's quite a warm order. I think he's about three to one tops. My worry is, it's like Wayne just said, he hung afterwards, and whether he's just a bit green for a big field handicap like that, I, I don't know. He's the one with the most potential for sure. Um, already mentioned North for the Wall uh, that I tipped in the weekend, but I've got one at a big price that I quite like called De Bestie Man, trained by, class? trained by Susie Smith. Well, that's a cup of class. It is a handicap. Oh, yeah, right? is, this is a handicap with a top weight rate at 140. It's actually worse than the races he's been running in. That is a low now, ceiling, isn't it? It yeah, is, yeah. It is, a, it is a very low ceiling for, for an open handicap as well. Like, you know what I mean? There's no, there's no top limit to, mm. to what can run in it. So, so any, anyway, Domestic Man has run in two races at three mile uh, on his last two starts. He was six to Chambers on Ice. Looked like he was staying on, but that was steadily run. Last time at Cheltenham, he went with Chambers and Ice from the front, and he looked like he had virtually everything in trouble apart from the winner. Um, I mean, like, goodbye dance or something of, of, of Fergal O'Brien's, uh, until um, jumping the second last and turning in, and then he just got tired. He got beat nine and a half lengths in the end, but seven of those, at least seven of those lengths were in the last hundred yards, coming back three furlongs, Sharp track. soft ground. I mean, he's never been right handed. I mean, until this year, he'd never been anywhere other than Plumpton. He's off a Sir very track, low, yeah. ver you know, he's. One of the most likely raced, uh, and he's 16 to 1, so I'll take a chance. Mm. JJ, any thoughts? I was looking at Larkbow Lad, Philip Hobbs's. He's um, quite consistent. Uh, won at Worcester last time uh, quite nicely. He's not the most fluent in jumping, um, but I think it's quite an open race, and I think, you know, Philip Hobbs could that you finds know. you out in these big handicaps mm. when you're not fluent. No, he he hasn't run for a while, neither has he? He hasn't run no, since yeah, October no. or something. But You uh, mentioned going left, actually. I think right handed is a big tick usually in this race, isn't it? So, But like mm. you say, the race isn't its usual class. So, guys, another nice race tomorrow is the three o'clock at Warwick, the classic handicap chase. What's everyone's thoughts on this? Um, I like the conditional. More rain, the better for him. Yeah. Um, ticks every box for me. I think he's going to be a worthy favourite, takes all the beating. The one horse that I am interested in is Le Brew. Um, I think he could be very dangerous. Obviously, Ben Paulin's horses haven't been in the best of health um, up to this season. He has had a couple of winners over the last 14 days, um, but I think that's from sort of 30 odd runners. So the strike rate, again, still isn't great. But um, he's stepping back up in trip as well. He's stepping back up in trip. Uh, Luca Morgan takes off seven. Yeah. You know, I think he ends up running off 141. So off that rate, and if he can pick up from last season, he's going to be dangerous off that mark. He had a mother and a father a race at Cheltenham, didn't he? 
Oh, he did, yeah. I mean, that was, that was an extremely hard attritional race, and he hasn't quite got over it. But he did look a bit better uh, in the beta chase when he was seventh. Yeah. He looked to be enjoying himself a bit more, so he could well be on the way back. Will the condition will stay three mile five? Do you think that's a guarantee? I think so. I'm not convinced. I think mm. Kimberly like Candy would be a stronger stayer. He's got a Gold um, Cup entry, isn't he? Uh, he has. I mean, you know, look, if he's good enough to run, if he's good enough to run in a Gold Cup, then then he and that then, wouldn't be then like he David wins. Bridgewater, would it? To give a horse like that? Any well, other? no. I mean, he's, 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 he's put the giant bolt. He put the did really well with the giant bolter. So he knows sure. that he knows the level of a horse, and he's done really well with this horse since he it came. It didn't actually surprise to see me entered him entered mm. in the Gold Cup mm. because for me he's almost in a oh. similar yeah. profile and and climbing the ladder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but by the same by the same token, I think Kimberly County is a really really strong stayer. Now he seemed to have trouble with his jumping last year. I mean, I, I filled my boots on him for the Ida Chase and how he finished fifth, having tried to take nearly every I fence with him on the first it. circuit. Um, it just tells you he's got a lot of ability. But they put the chick pieces on in the beach chase, and he was a strong finishing uh, second to walk in the mill. Um, I think he'll. I think he's perfect for that sort of race. Uh, I would suggest an outsider as well, Cross Park. Uh, now, he did finish tailed off at Haydock last time, but he actually turned and turned for home second, going better than all by the, by the winner who won again. Uh, and he was heavily eased um, from about three out. Um, he's run four times in races over three, five or further, finished fourth and third in this race, uh, and obviously won the Ida and finished second in the Scottish National. And, and Jamie Moore, who rode him in the Ida last year, is back on for the first time. He won't mind the ground, would he? I don't think. He, won't be, he, he probably wants it to dry out a little bit. He wouldn't want it deep. So, are you going to go two-way split? I'm a two-way split, yeah. Okay. Wayne, just remind us of yours. The conditional order, Wayne? Yeah, uh, he'd, be, he'd be the one that I'd like to ride, yeah. I think he's the potential to improve. JJ? I think Lebru stepping up, back up in trips is massively going to suit. But also, like that Petit Power said earlier, eight to one. Um, Liam Harrison's taken off the seven. He's, he's won, run well for him the last three starts. I think um, he could have a little squeak there as well. So you are doing extremely well this season, Fergal O'Brien. Right then, Irish racing topic for us. Uh, all eyes on Cheltenham, of course, in March, but there are other big meetings such as the Dublin Racing Festival at Leopardstown coming up in early February. So we've got to switch our attention to this, chaps. And Paul, there's been a bit of news about that this week, hasn't there? Um, Noel Mead and Willie Munnings coming out and saying about the state of the ground. What's your view on that? Person? Yeah, don't blame them, to be honest. I mean, they, you know, they did a lot of drainage work and it seems to be now be the fastest um, draining track. Uh, in Britain or Ireland, and Irish horses, you know, more than the British, are just used to riding on really soft ground. That's what they, you know, that's what they're bred for. That's what the trainers want to run them on, and they don't want them getting jarred up uh, and injured before Cheltenham. Which last year there was a stack of non-runners at the Dublin Racing Festival, yeah. and it was a real disappointment. So, you know, yes, it feels weird to talk about watering at the Ever end of so January, weird. early February, but you know, if it gets that dry, then they ought to. They need to, yeah. Well, look, the tracks, like I say, is, is abnormal for this time of year, um, and these tracks have to produce safe ground. So, back in the day when you were riding, a, you know, a big race at Earth Allen, you'd go and walk the track and say, and we just can't run it on this. So, you know, they haven't, there's not enough moisture in the ground. Yeah, he, he was very good, actually. I used to sort of have a stick and, and um, walk most, most tracks um, before they ran, and if it was never, ever any doubt, I would always give him a buzz and, you know, either too soft or, or, or too quick. Yeah, it was, I always used to check the state of the ground before, before. Most, most race days. Just four in the Irish Gold Cup last year, Paul. We can't be having that again, can no, we? No, I hope not, especially as I'm going to make a, a, a rare attendance this year as well. Brace yourself. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, are we having more, four, more than four Guinnesses, put it that way. Well, but, okay. But, no, hopefully we'll get some really, really competitive races and all the good horses will run, but it will require the ground to be deemed safe by everybody. Really interesting point, actually, that we're talking about off-air. You're going over there. One mm. trainer that was thinking about coming over for the Lanzarote this season, looking away from your Mullins and your Meads, mm. you know, and your Henry de Bromeds, is Gavin Cromwell. Shrewd operator. Very shrewd. Uh, I think he's number five trainer in Ireland in terms of uh, winners so far this season uh, and runners. Yeah. Um, I don't think any, you know, no more than five trainers have run more than 300, 300 horses, and he's one of them. Um, but no, he wasn't thinking of running them. Uh, well, so these Irish that, trainers enter horses in handicaps at this time of year just to find out what the official assessor is going to do with their mark. I like the way uh, you're thinking was one that was in the alpha mixes in there. Exactly. So go back and look at your racing post from two days after the entries were made. Make a note of what marks they've now got in Britain because yeah. they're the marks they'll be, they'll be able to work off when it goes to Cheltenham or they might have to go up. Fascinating, isn't it? A little steer for the cold cut there. So guys, now we want to know your naps for the weekend. What are you going for? I'm going for Mossy Fen, as I mentioned before. I think this horse, um, you got to ignore its chart and run last time. It's stepping back. Um, it's step, if the trip was too far for it, that day, I think it got in a little bit of trouble. What's everyone thinking, Paul? What are you going for? 
Uh, yeah, I wouldn't argue with Mossy Fenn. I, I, I give him a big chance, but I, you know, I like one. I like one at a price, so I'm going to go in the Lanzarote for the Besty Man. He's around 16 to one. You get extra places if you shop around with the bookmakers, and I think it's a fair each way bet. Yeah. I'm going to take you on Chambler for me. Um, yeah, I think uh, the British form of, of his bumper run with Edward Stone, Chantry House, and what he's done this season. I think he's going to be a major player Saturday. Head to head in the Levington Spa. I'm going to go for 130 at Kempton. I'm expecting Eric LaRouge to bounce back over fences. Sammy Bill will probably be the favourite. I've just got the feeling the handicap I might be getting to. He likes to the track Eric LaRouge as well, doesn't he? He, he does indeed. And mm. I think what you said to me off air about the rain they've had there at Kempton mm. has swayed me that way. So here on What a Shout, we always like to end it with a big call. And Wayne, I know you've got a great one here. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to go back in time. We never used to have Sunday racing. Um, it was a day of rest. Why do we need to race seven days a week? I agree. I agree with that. What am it's I going to do on a Sunday? That's no, correct. <laughs> correct. Normal things. <laughs> that is a normal <laughs> thing. <laughs> Sitting in front of the telly, having a punt. Getting yeah, cold turkey. What is the reason behind that, do you think? Because well, the... everyone needs a day off, don't they? Everyone needs that, you know, that, that rest, and especially jockeys as well, who diet hard, who have to, you know, it's yeah, just look, nice I'm to probably, have that one I'm thinking from, from a jockey's point of view, you know, there's lads there, that, they're like Sir Richard Johnson you know, yeah. and, and Brian, they're, they're continuous every day of the week, obviously fighting out for a championship, you know, something, one day a week, look for it where they know they can spend time, you know, just have, have, have a day off. Normality. Normality and, and just I recharge the batteries. Yeah, you, yeah. Do you know what every I mean? You cannot, as, as a jockey, yeah. you cannot miss, you don't want to miss mm. rides, you don't want to give up rides. Look at AP, look at rides AP, remember AP yeah. McCoy when he, he literally didn't have a day off, never had days mm. off. That, that, that's, so that, I just think, like I say, we managed without it. I think there's too much racing on the whole and um, I just think we can afford to have one day a week where everybody can just chill out. I half agree, but I still wonder what on earth I'm going to do on the day. <laughs> Absolutely. The That's gone way <laughs> over my head, Wayne. I'm going to be honest with you from a punter's point of view. That's uh, the jockey and the punter. Paul? Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've already had a bit of stick over this on, on, on Twitter from some people. I am going to, I really, really fancy a horse who spent all last season running over three miles over hurdles. I fancy for the Arkle over two miles. Oh, and that is the Willie Mullins train back arm. Who, who's jumping, I thought, was sensational at Nace. Uh, and when he got beat first time up when he wasn't fit over two mile five furlong. Uh, I'm full of hope that he is going to turn up in the Irish Arkle, take on Notebook, beat him, and end up six to four favourite. And he's still about 20s now, 16s, I think he is now. Lovely. So that's my big call. I know he's shot for the Arkle. He's not got necessarily anything else coming out of the woodwork for that at the minute. Mm, he? Well, he hasn't, but he had cash back who won, who won at the weekend. Um, it was impressive, really it? impressively, but Bapham was actually entered in that race uh, at the five day stage as well, which suggests they are thinking about coming back in trip. I think the way he jumps, uh, the speed that he jumps, um, it's, it's a trait of a two mile. Okay, big call from me then. He's having an absolutely sizzling time at the minute. We mentioned it previously earlier on the show. Philip Hobbs is back in the big time, isn't he? Masters Legacy, really impressed with that at Taunton on Tuesday. They had one yesterday, Kaluki, which they smashed up in the betting, led all the way, and that looked like a proper horse to me. I think with Devi Desir as well, we could be looking at a double at the Cheltenham Festival for the Hobbs stable. Paul, give that a bit of weight. Hey, you'd be disappointed if he didn't have any winners. I mean, Time Hill looks an absolute, you know, time obvious... Hill. Uh, for the Albert Bartlett, I think if he goes up in trip, he looks, looks, looks like a really, really strong stayer and very classy as well. So, um, yeah, you'd be, you'd be disappointed if he wasn't among the winners. Some heavyweight calls for the week, then. Well, that is it for the fourth edition of What A Shout. Remember to keep getting your questions in below or on Twitter with the hashtag What A Shout. Yeah, join us next week. Patrick Mullins in the seat. That's going to be lively, no doubt. Don't forget to download the free Racing Post app on the app or the Play Store. Just thanks, Paul Keeley, Wayne Hutchinson, myself and JJ. We'll be back next week. Mm -hmm.